Hi there, I'm Melissa, and after going on over 50 cruises, I finally tried out the MSC Seashore. And let me tell you, it was full of surprises. Some amazing, and some, well, not so much. With a little one under two, I have a lot to share about how family-friendly the ship really is. Stick around because you won't want to miss the unexpected twists and turns of this cruise. So before we get started, have you noticed that invited press and influencers tend to rate the MSC Seashore around a 4.5 or very good? But the regular cruisers that are paying their hard-earned money are rating it around a 2.8? Kind of poor? This got me thinking, I want to see where the truth actually lies. That's why we launched this concept called Sail or Fail, to find out what is really going on. We're not here to look for something bad, but rather to confirm with video proof whether these reviews are consistent with our experience. So let's get started. So what were my overall first impressions of the MSC Seashore? Honestly, as soon as I stepped onto the ship, I could not help but notice how beautiful and stunning the atrium is. I mean, seriously, MSC ships are gorgeous, but not everything is as perfect as it seems. Some cruise critic users had mentioned the initial cleanliness when they boarded the ship. I will say I didn't notice anything immediately, but if you thought the atrium was stunning, wait until you hear about our dining room experience. Definitely full of surprises. Now the design of the MSC Seashore is modern and super elegant with the atrium being the main showstopper. Navigating the layout, however, definitely has its quirks. Here's where our first main complaint from Cruise Critic came in, the elevator system. Now, we have used elevator systems like this in the past. I actually like the, the thought, the design of the elevator to where you select the floor that you wanna go on on the outside of the elevator, and then it tells you what car to go into. I love that design, right? So now not everyone's cramming in every single elevator. They have a designated elevator to go to. However, Cruise Critic had mentioned the elevators coming slowly, and they also mentioned that the doors of the elevators would close very quickly. So we thought we put it to the test. And let me tell you, they were very, very correct. <laughs> We waited sometimes a very, very long time for the elevator. I'm talking like 10, 15 minutes. And now with, with Noah, with our little one under two, sometimes it was just easier to take the elevator instead of carrying her up 17 flights of stairs after a long day in the sun. But other times we decided to take the stairs because the elevator was taking a significant amount of time. I mentioned the elevator doors closing very quickly. That's not an exaggeration. They would open and within a second, they would be closing again. So you got to be on your toes. You got to be keeping watch of the elevator floor when you're inside the elevator. And if you're on the outside, you got to be ready to get on the elevator as soon as that door opens because it will close on you. The buffet had a wide range of options from fresh fruits to savory entrees. I would say they have a pretty decent variety and the quality wasn't too bad, but there were some misses. Hands down, the best option in the buffet on MSC is going to be pizza. So if you are a pizza lover or even a pizza liker, you have got to try their pizza. They have a wide variety of toppings and they even have a thinner crust and a thick crust. And oh, guys, you just have to try it. It's really, really delicious. But there are a few misses in the buffet as well. I did happen to find an eggshell in my egg at breakfast time. And I know y'all that might not be a big deal to some people, but I'm just glad that I visually saw it before I took a bite because that would have ruined my whole breakfast. Um, it's just it's just a texture thing to me, y'all. And I know that it's some it's a thing that somebody else would want to hear as well. And if you thought that was surprising, wait until you hear our experience in the specialty restaurants. Out of the four nights on our MSC cruise, we ate specialty dining three nights because we honestly wanted a wide variety of options to compare to our cruise critic reviews that we have found because food is just such a hot topic here on MSC. So we ate at Ola Tacos, the Butcher's Cut, and the Teppanyaki restaurant. And honestly, all of our food was pretty good. You can definitely tell a higher quality in these restaurants as you are paying extra for them. You typically notice all of the positive reviews raving about the specialty dining. So we wanted to see if that was actually going to be our experience. And you know what? It was, we had no real issues in the specialty dining. All of our food was very good. I would say service was a tad bit slow in all of the dining areas, but the food in the specialty dining was top notch. 
but we have some more to discuss in the dining experience. As I mentioned, we only ate specialty dining three nights out of the four. That left us eating in the main dining room the first night. So that means if you wanna go on this ship and you don't wanna pay a single cent more for dining, you would eat most likely either in the buffet or the main dining room. I will have to say, I was fairly impressed with the food in the main dining. We have eaten on MSC before and it is typically something that leaves you wanting a lot more than what you get. But we had steak, the steak was cooked to our liking, the flavors were there. Honestly, we were interested in eating the main dining room because one of the reviews that we read said that they found plastic in their food. So we just wanted to experience the dining room for ourselves to see if we found any unexpected surprises in our food. And lo and behold, Cullen had some chocolate in his kiwi sorbet. Now, once again, not necessarily a big deal to many people, but that just kind of talks about the cleanliness of the kitchen in the back. They're not really paying attention before scooping into their ice cream. Also, if someone is allergic to chocolate, that could be a big deal. So these little things that people were pointing out, we actually proved to be true. Let's move on to the cabins. Now we booked a junior suite in the Aria experience on the MSC Seashore. Overall, the cabin was okay. It reminded me of a standard balcony cabin on the inside, and the outside had this interesting extended balcony. Um, typically, extended balconies go extend this way, this extended this way. So it was, I don't know, three or four balconies deep, and it, it did offer... Um, <laughs> a nice little walkway for our toddler to walk and run around in outside. Um, however, it was not very private as people above us could see down and, and kind of look upon us while we were outside. Also, when we were all the way to the front, you could see everybody from left and right. And I just thought that it was kind of an odd layout for a junior suite. Some cruise critic reviewers mentioned that their cabins were not clean. Um, they were kind of musty and humid and their towels were not dry all the time. So we put that to the test and honestly, we had the same experience. So unfortunately, we found something in our toilet before we even used it. There was mold on the shower line. Our cabin steward failed to bring us towels multiple times. He also didn't clean our room uh, on the last night. So we were having some issues with the cabin. Also on the balcony, there were toothpicks and floss and things that people were throwing over the balcony. So I can't honestly say that our room was a clean experience. So once again, we proved those cruise critic reviews. True, unfortunately. Enough talk about the cabins. Let's talk about entertainment. I have to say, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the quality of entertainment on board the MSC Seashore. First, to kick all things off, we had the best cruise director, Reverend Dr. E. He kicked it off with a fun sail away party, y'all. Everybody was having a great time. I love to see it. I joined in. Noah fell asleep, but you know, we that's beside the point. Throughout the cruise, they had plenty of live music and trivia and live stage shows. Honestly, so diverse and engaging for anyone on board. Which brings me to the nightlife here on MSC. Being parents, we typically are not that into nightlife at the moment, if you know what I mean. But I will say MSC has one of the best nightlife parties in the industry. It is on their own private island right next to the lighthouse. I believe it's called the Cuba Libre dance party. There's just something about being on the beach, dancing to music, under the stars with a ship lit up in the background. Y'all, it is a vibe. They have fire pits. They have a lighthouse show. You just got to experience it. They also had white parties. So if you like to dance, you're going to have a great time on MSC. Let's move on to the quality of service on board. Now the crew members on board were very friendly and helpful, which made our cruise experience rather enjoyable. However, there were a few instances of slow service and kind of like misunderstandings. So the last day of the cruise, for whatever reason, our cabin sewer did not come in our room to clean it, therefore leaving us with no fresh towels before dinner. I went down to guest services, requested towels, because last time we had called and nobody came to the room at all. So I decided to go down myself, ask for towels. I was expecting them to 
give me towels while I was down there. He said he would call for towels and it was still another 45 minutes before we got towels, which was unfortunate because our dinner was in an hour and we all had to shower. I would say be a little patient with the service because it might not be as quick as you would like it to be. Now, one new important element for our family is how family friendly is MSC Seashore? Is the kids club suitable for kids of all ages? And I am here to tell you, yes, absolutely. Honestly, the MSC Seashore is one of the first ships that we've experienced that is so family friendly, even for infants. So if you have a family of very little ones and or family of all different ages, there's going to be plenty of activities for your family to do on the ship. The thing that was most important to us was that we were able to utilize the baby care, which happened twice a day for about two hours, where you can go and you can drop your child off with the staff on board. Now, I know that some other cruise lines do offer this as a service that you pay for, which is a minimal fee, but I do like that MSC has included this option. Now, it's not all the time. Like I said, it's like scheduled throughout the day. I believe it was like between 10 and 12 and like five and seven on our sailing, but we personally didn't want to drop Noah off all day anyway. We just wanted like an hour. So it was just nice to have that uh, ability to do so. So she could have some fun playing with some toys, singing some songs, and we could have some fun in the spa. Another thing we really loved about how MSC takes care of the kids, specifically the little kids, was the high chair situation. Now, we've been on several cruises on many different cruise lines, and um, high chairs are usually okay. You know, like they're wooden or they're plastic. Some of them come with a tray. Some of them don't. Um, But MSC has taken extra special care for these infants and have provided high chairs that are soft and comfortable, and they all come with trays which was very nice because our little one likes to escape. And so we need that extra tray to hold her in there, but also so she can reach the food and not grab everything off of the table. So it's the little details sometimes that really help. Now for the rest of the family, there are plenty of things to do on the ship. They have a giant arcade. They have F1 simulator. They have a roller coaster simulator. They have a water park. On the ship, they have they have an adventure park on the ship. They have water slides. They have a splash pad for the youngs. They have a little adventure course. It's, it's actually a very cool place to be in. And even if you are not a kid and you're a kid at heart, you're going to enjoy being in there, I promise. So all in all, if you have a family and you're looking to go on a cruise, I would highly recommend checking out MSC for all of the family features the ship has. Now, speaking of the water park, let's talk a little bit about the pools and the hot tubs. I would like to think that there are actually a ton of pools and hot tubs on the ship to be used, and none of them really seemed too crowded, which was really nice. They seemed clean and well-maintained that offered a very relaxing experience. Now, other facilities that you may want to use on the ship include the gym and the spa. I did mention we did get to spend a little bit of time in the spa, specifically the thermal suite. And I would say it is definitely worth trying to book. They had many of treatment rooms. They also had many, um, they had the sauna, they have steam rooms, they have a snow room, they had like a thalassotherapy pool, scented showers. It, It was a very relaxing experience. So I would recommend you checking that out if you are looking at going on the ship. They also had a gym. Unfortunately, we did not get to use the gym as we had planned because for some reason they seem to have different hours than we were expecting. Um, I believe most of the time the gyms are open pretty much all the time, but anytime we went to go use it, the gym seemed close. So keep that in mind if that is something that you're looking forward to on your cruise. But it did seem like there were a good variety of gym equipment in there if you can get in there. Let's talk itinerary for a little bit. So our four night cruise went to Ocean Key, their private island, and Nassau. We did not book any excursions through MSC or outside of MSC. We decided to we decided to either stay on the ship or just kind of hang out at their private beach. I will mention this because not many people that have been on MSC may know this, but if you are planning on spending your day in Ocean Key, 
please know that you do have to pay for an umbrella. I am saying this again, you have to pay for an umbrella. Some cruise critic users had mentioned the process of getting an umbrella. And so we didn't purchase the umbrella before we got on the ship. We did get a note in our room saying that if we wanted an umbrella, we could spend $32 to get said umbrella, which I think is a little steep, but that's not all y'all. If you decide that you want to purchase an umbrella on the island, you must go to the stand to pick up your umbrella. You must carry it to wherever you would like it to go. You must then put it in the ground and then you sit there and you enjoy your umbrella for as long as you want. And then if you decide that you want to move or you, that you're done with it for the day, you then have to dig it back up and carry it with you. I'm not sure why we're doing this, but that is something that we found true from the cruise critic users. So, but other than that, I do believe that Ocean Key is a very beautiful destination. And if you want a relaxing beach day, I think it is worth going. Now, the main question, is MSC Seashore worth the money? I will say, considering the price, MSC Seashore offers a decent value. However, there are some areas that need improvement. The initial price was attractive, but be sure to factor in those additional charges for the umbrella and specialty dining and all the other things that you might want to be purchasing on the ship. Some cruise critic reviewers noted some hidden costs and value of certain amenities. Now, before this video ends, we cruise two cruise ships at the same time. So if you wanna see how this experience compares to our Royal Caribbean experience, click on this video right here.